by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in the brightness in this Paschal feast, we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure mind we may attain to the festival of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
record of God's saving deeds and history, how he saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. The story of creation. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and a void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and he called darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that, and it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So, God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, 
I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to prey of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all of the multitudes. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they are created. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, 
Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Flood. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the, un of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued 40 days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the water. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove and it did not return to him any more. In the 600th first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you 
and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth, God said. This is the sign of the covenant that I make between you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have placed in the skies the sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we, who are saved through water and the Spirit, may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. 
But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians <clears throat> so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by the strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to the normal depth as the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider, he has thrown into the sea.
has peopled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has overthrown the enemy. I will sing to the Lord, for he has risen up in night. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretched on your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love you led the people you redeemed. With your might you brought them in safety to your holy Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of the nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. He said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, 
These bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place it you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The gathering of God's people. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. 
He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time and I will save the lame and gather the outcast and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. 
For if we have been united with him in death, like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. In the name of 
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you have ever longed for a way to explain or express your faith to someone or even to yourself, this night, Easter Vigil, is the best articulation or encapsulation of faith. If ever you were hoping to showcase to a friend the best example of church, this is the night in which the church is at the church's fullest. This night has everything, the drama of the paschal fire and candle, the haunting beauty of the exultant, the narration of our salvation history, baptism and Eucharist, and all the joy that comes with Easter. After this night, the rest of our Easter celebrations pale in comparison. This is the night. The challenge of Easter for us is that not only are we quick to forget the darkness of this past week, but also we are tempted to only celebrate what God has done in Jesus Christ and not celebrate how extraordinary what God has done through all time. Easter Vigil pulls us out of that desire to be narrowly focused and thrusts us back into the full story that is our story, a story that makes Jesus' resurrection all the more powerful. Easter Vigil gives us the opportunity to step out of the empty tomb and to immediately recall all the other things that God has done for us, the ways that God has repeatedly delivered us and to understand at a much deeper level the significance of this night. Tonight we hear five of the nine possible readings we could have read, which narrate our salvation history. First, we hear that creation story, the story wherein God takes the watery chaos and creates the earth and all that is in the earth. The lights, the waters, the birds, the animals, the ground and vegetation, humanity, and Sabbath. We hear again and again how God creates and how that creation is good. We hear in this first reading the tender, loving kindness of God, the abundance of creation, and the glory of God. Second, we hear the dramatic story of the flood, where our sinfulness drives God to flood the earth. But the flood story is also a story of God's mercy, a God who loves so much that God cannot totally annihilate God's creation. After the flood, God promises to never again harm creation so deeply. Then we hear the Exodus story, The story where God takes God's people out of slavery, frees them from Egypt, and guides them through the Red Sea to the final destruction of Pharaoh's army. Despite the people's groaning, their illogical desire to return to slavery rather than to trust the Lord, and the people's unworthiness of such grace, God saves the people, delivering them from bondage and death. Next, we hear that haunting story from Ezekiel where the prophet breathes breath back into a valley full of dry bones, the dry bones of the people of Israel, symbolizing God's restoration of Israel. And then finally, finally, we hear the Zephaniah story of the gathering of God's people back together from exile that story in which God promises to return God's people to the promised land, to deliver them from their suffering at the hands of the oppressors, and to restore their fortunes. As an exiled people who, quite frankly, deserved the loss of their land because of the ways they deserted God, this promise of being regathered is more than they could ever hope for or imagine. 
in light of this salvation history, this snapshot way of showing how lovingly God creates us, how lovingly God forgives us, how lovingly God returns to us time and again, despite our grievous sins, we then turn to Jesus' story. We see that as God's people, we have benefited from the many times that God has delivered us from oppression and suffering caused by our sinfulness. But in this final act by God, the giving of God's Son, Jesus Christ, to suffering, persecution, and death, we see that Jesus' resurrection means that we not only have a God that delivers us from bondage of death in this world, but also we have a God that delivers us from bondage, from death in the life to come. Instead of taking away one more earthly oppressor, God takes away the oppressor of death, granting us forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. This narrative, this story of the empty tomb, is the last stop in that salvation narrative for us. This is the night when we remember what God does at the Red Sea. This is the night when we recall that Christ died for our sins. This is the night when we proclaim that Christ has broken the bonds of death and given us eternal life. And we remember all of that this night through our actions, the lighting of the Paschal candle, the reaffirmation of our baptismal vows, and the receiving of bread and wine. We hear the word of God, and we respond to the word of God through our liturgical actions. And so, what does God call us to do in light of this night? Rejoice now. The whole earth the earth that God created rejoices now because darkness is vanquished through Jesus Christ. The heavenly chorus rejoices, shouting for the salvation fulfilled and completed in Christ the King. The church rejoices. We resound as a people, being glad for all that God does for us through Jesus Christ. Like our ancestor, the prophet Miriam, who led the women in dancing and song, we too are bursting with praise and thanksgiving. We praise God in song, prayer, and proclamation because we are so overwhelmed with the abundance of God's love and grace for us. We rejoice now because, like the Israelites on the other side of the sea, we are awed by God and we can only offer our adoration. We have no way of paying God back or thanking God enough. And so with great adoration and awe, we rejoice now. And we leave this place bursting with joy as we share the salvation story of all that God has done for us. Rejoice now, Mother Church. Alleluia. Alleluia. Risen Lord, for us you endured the cross and the grave. When we were yet sinners, you redeemed and saved us. May we sing your eternal praises everywhere we go. Risen Lord, the good shepherd of your sheep, guide the faithful of your holy church, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, 
and Jennifer, Charles, Jim, and Bob, our clergy. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Risen Lord, the ruler of all, speak forth salvation to this weary world, especially through our leaders, President Biden, Governor Youngkin, and the legislature and judiciary. We pray for our community, this nation, and the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Risen Lord, the blessing of all people, show us to love our neighbors as you love us, especially through the ministry of El Ogar. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Risen Lord, the health of the world, Pour out your healing grace on our souls and the souls of all in any need or trouble, especially those we name at this time. For Ray and for Austin. For the men and women serving in the armed forces, especially Damon, Zachary, and Max. For whom else shall we pray? Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Risen Lord, the promise of eternal life to all who follow you. Remember all who have died. For whom shall we pray? For Fred and for Martha. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who are reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good evening and happy Easter. I'm so glad you are here tonight. Just a quick note um, for one for tomorrow. If you'd like to join us as we continue our Easter celebrations, we'll be here at 8 and 10 and online at 10. Uh, if you're receiving communion tonight, there will be several options available to you. We have the traditional host, either a regular one or a gluten free. Just let us know if you need gluten free. And then we uh, are drinking from the cup at this time. We're not intincting. Or if you prefer, we have sealed containers of communion. Just let us know you prefer a container, and we're happy to give that to you. Or if you prefer to come forward for a blessing, simply cross your arms over your chest, and we're happy to give you a blessing tonight. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body, one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Oh, 
gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.